milk. It's consumed on every continent. And if you live in the Middle East, there is a good chance it comes from here. Almarai's massive factory in Saudi Arabia. Some days you don't believe what is actually moving and what is actually going on around you, the place is so big. In this mega factory, it gets bottled by the millions. But it's not just milk. Yogurts, cheeses and juices fly through these massive production lines. This factory is packed to the ceiling with high-tech equipment. I come to work and I play with my big toys. To deliver milk on this huge scale, you need mega factories. The world consumes over 500 million tons of dairy products each year. And one of the largest players is Almarai in Saudi Arabia. Its name and products are known around the Middle East. One of the best sellers that leaves this mega factory is good old fashioned milk. How much? The equivalent of 10 million glasses each and every day. And to do that, it needs a lot of cows. 135,000 to be exact. On average, each cow in this giant herd produces over 13,000 litres of raw milk annually. And amazingly, all of this happens in the deserts of Saudi Arabia. The main farms and processing facilities are located in Al Khaj, roughly 80 kilometres southeast of the capital, Riyadh. In 1977, Almarai started processing fresh milk. They began with 300 cows. Today, the herd is 450 times that size. احنا بدانا كشركة ألبان صغيرة أو بسيطة جدا بالرؤية الواضحة انتقلنا إلى شركة غذاء نصنف أنفسنا اليوم كشركة غذاء من الأكبر في أو الأكبر في العالم العربي ومن الأكبر في العالم. Now the processing operation has been centralized and two massive 268,000 square meter factories shoulder the daily load. And feeding into those two factories is milk from six super farms, covering over 82 square kilometers of the surrounding desert. Inside these six mega farms, Almarai have the most popular producers of milk on the planet. Holstein cows. Holsteins descended from Holland and were exported around the world due to their high milking rates. The herd at Almarai are able to produce more milk than other breeds of cattle. In order for us to be able to achieve the yields that we do on this farm and in the company in general, we have to look after these cows as if they were our own pets. These cows are well fed, given lots of water, and are kept comfortable, all of which helps with their milk production. These mega farms produce an amazing 2.5 million litres of raw milk every day. But before they can produce milk, they need to give birth. With no males on the farms, artificial insemination is used to impregnate the females. The lineage with the highest milk producing rates are used. The cows are carefully monitored and the inseminated ones are marked so they can be checked for pregnancy in 35 days.
Over 200 calves are born on these mega farms every day. That's one every eight minutes. Because of the volume, they have a veterinary unit with a staff of 30 who serve as bovine midwives. طبعا نحن الان في عنبر ولاده آه هذا العنبر تقريبا يحتوي الى 150 من 150 الى 250 آه بقره طبعا في الاشهر الاخيره من من الحمل وجاهزين للولاده آه طبعا تكون الولاده آه خلال على مدار 24 ساعه طبعا تحت اشراف آه آه فنيين A birthing can happen in just minutes A newborn calf can see immediately, and within 30 minutes, it will be able to stand on its own. كانت الولادة طبيعية طبعاً، فنحاول إحنا نبعد ال ال البيبي عن الأم، أخشى عنه إيش إنه يداس عليه أو 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 يصاب بضرر طبعاً، ومن ثم نقوم بتنظيف العجر، خاصة المجار الهواء. ونقوم تنظيفه وتدليكه طبعا وبعدها طبعا يكون اللي هو ايش؟ النيفل ديب تعقيم السرة بالايودين A Holstein calf weighs around 40 kilos at birth Each day's newborns stay together in holding pens for a few days so they can be watched over before being moved into growing areas. Every day for the next two years, these calves will be fed a diet filled with protein to help them grow. When they are full size, they will weigh 700 kilos and stand almost a meter and a half tall. Cows of different ages are fed unique diets tailor-made to maximize their growth. The herd eats four times a day. And feeding this many cows at mealtime is a massive challenge. The 12 giant mixing machines on this farm churn out 1,200 tons of feed every day. With high levels of protein, Alfalfa is a key ingredient. One mixer takes eight minutes to blend enough for a single meal for 600 cows. Every day we would bring in off our storage area 340 tons of alfalfa, and that would be processed through these mixers on a daily basis to feed all of the stock on the farm. The alfalfa gets mixed in with cottonseed, maize, soybean and corn flakes, and other concentrates. This is a special premix which we mix every night. We mix 110 tons every night. The exact proportions are a company secret, and it's all based around years of diet research. It helps the cows maximize milk production. As these mixers churn the feed, a fleet of 45 trucks waits below to bring each finished batch to the thousands of hungry cows. Oh, it is an incredible amount of feed. It's an incredible amount of work too to get that done. Depending on the food mix, the trucks will then go to feed the adults or the younger calves. They eat around 50 kilograms of feed a day. And it needs to all be timed with military precision. طبعا عادة الابقار الهوليستاين يفضلون الروتين في اي معدل في اي تغيير في الروتين في اي حال تغيير في الروتين طبعا ياثر على انتاجيه ياثر على انتاجيه الحليب. بعد ما تنتهي فترة التغلية ساعة تقريبا يذهبون إلى إلى المحلب لتتم عملية الحلب. And once all that milk gets pumped, it heads for the factory. At this mega factory, the milk will go from the silos through to processing, labeling, 
and filling. But first, the bottle needs to be made here, in the blow moulding area. And those hardy plastic milk bottles are made right here on site. They are made from high density polyethylene, or HDPE for short. Small plastic beads. It's one of the most widely used plastics in the world, used to make grocery bags, pipes, and even toys. It is perfect for milk bottles because its polymers are light, hard to break, and long lasting. Over 12,000 bags of these tiny beads are turned into nearly 400,000 bottles every single day. We use for a year 45,000 tons of the polyethylene to the cathedral. From the loading bin, they are sucked through pipes into a blending machine, which mixes up to 250 kilos of the pellets with recycled plastic. This all gets fed into a 15-ton blow moulding machine where the plastic is melted at 190 degrees. The soft plastic is then blown into a metal mould that shapes each container. Every eight seconds, a new line of bottles hit the conveyor belt. Before they can be filled, the excess plastic needs to be trimmed. فبعد عملية التبريد تأتينا العلبة بالزوائد فالزوائد جزء من الماكينة يتم خط إبعاد الزوائد من العلبة ويتم إعادة تدويرها من جديد وكل المراحل هذه أوتوماتيك يعني الريسايكل يتم عملية طحن المواد من جديد وإعادة تدويرها إلى الماكينة Every 3,500 bottles trimmed generates 160 kilos of plastic. That excess plastic goes back into the blending machine to be melted again. Now that they have the desired shape, it's time to test them. Each bottle gets checked for leaks. Rubber pads grip the top of the bottle and the air is sucked out. A sensor detects any holes and the machine automatically sends rejects to the recycling bin. This Now that these milk bottles are ready, and with millions of customers waiting, just how did they get the milk from the cow to the bottle? Here in the deserts of Saudi Arabia, the Almarai Mega Factory works around the clock to make millions of products that are distributed throughout the Middle East. A dairy herd of 135,000 Holstein cows produce 2.5 million liters of milk a day. To get that level of production, these cows need to be kept comfortable. Once the temperature rises above the body temperature of the cow, which is between 38 and 40 degrees, it causes heat stress. Now, once that temperature is above the animal's temperature, we lose production. So they came up with a solution air conditioning units to spray a cool mist throughout the sheds. This system of cooling is known as evaporative cooling. It sprays a mist onto the cows and then evaporates heat from the animal. Now the cows have been fed, relaxed and cooled, it's time for an udder clean. A nine-minute automated cow wash makes sure manure and any bacteria is removed. 
As they move towards the milking parlour, a series of pipes blow air towards the udders to dry them. A damp udder increases the chance that bacteria could infect the sterile milking machine. Finally, the cow's head for the milking parlour. Here at the mega farm, it's milking time. Using an automatic system, they can extract the milk at lightning speeds. In this parlour, 300 cows can be milked at a time. With so many cows, it's important that none are forgotten about. Each cow has a microchip in its left leg that tracks its every move to a control room, which also monitors its performance. These milking devices mimic the action of a suckling calf. The pulsation forces the milk to come out faster. This whole process takes just 12 minutes and one cow can produce up to 90 litres of milk a day. That means every day they produce over 2.5 million litres of milk from the six mega farms. That's nearly 400 glasses of milk per cow. After each milking, the udders are sprayed to prevent any bacteria from causing infection. Directly underneath the milking area, all of the pumped milk is first filtered through these valves to clear any debris. It then travels along a sterile pipe to a holding area where it is chilled to three degrees Celsius so no microorganisms can grow. The chilled milk is then pumped into four steel holding silos, ready for transport. Within hours, it's loaded onto refrigerated tankers that can hold 30,000 litres. 30 minutes later, and the truck is leaving the farm. Not before passing through a disinfectant shower used to stop possible foot and mouth disease outbreaks. It's a 30 kilometer journey to the two processing plants and this is where the real action begins. Every day, up to 80 tankers deliver raw milk into these unloading bays. From here, the milk is pumped through 10 silos that hold 1.8 million litres of milk. Before the raw milk heads to the plant, it's first checked to make sure no water has diluted the batch. From here, the milk gets separated. Some heads off to make yogurts and cheeses. But 30% stays as good old fresh milk. Before it's good enough to drink, it first needs to go through a series of processes to ensure the quality. And that happens in the pasteurization room. The raw milk 
first needs to be mixed together or homogenized. To do that, the milk goes through a network of pipes, sensors and temperature gauges to make sure both the quality of the milk and its consistency are uniform. طبعا الاجهزه هذه لا يخفى عنها شيء اي مشكله تواجهنا او اي شيء يظهر عندنا في الكمبيوتر وهذه يتحكمون في كل شيء وكل شخص له مسؤول عن باسترايزر معين هو اللي يقوم بعمليه بستره الحليب هو يضخ وكلها عن طريق التحكم بالجهاز هذا. Next, the milk needs to be pasteurized. It's piped through heated plates that quickly raise the milk's temperature to 78 degrees, killing harmful bacteria and extending the life of the milk. First, the newly made bottles need to be put in a single line, ready to be labeled. This 30 meter long conveyor belt moves at variable speeds. So if there is a blockage in the filling section, the bottles can be slowed down here. Every hour, one roll of labels will go onto 16,000 bottles. في هذه العملية يتم تغليف العبوات البلاستيكية بحيث يتم إمرار اللاصق التجاري إلى المشين، ومن ثم تتم عملية التغليف كما نرى هنا، ومن ثم تمر يتم إمرار العبوات البلاستيكية إلى خط التغذية. Moving along the grip conveyor, the bottles make their way to the labeling machine. Each bottle is spun as the label is glued on. A brush smooths the label, removing any static electricity. But before any of these bottles can be filled, their caps need to be made. طبعا القيمة الانتاجية عندنا لنهاية اليوم بالملايين The caps are made from a similar material to the milk bottles Again, the pellets are first put into a blending machine Millions of pellets are mixed with dye Today it's blue for full fat milk the mix is heated to 230 degrees Celsius before being pushed into the mold cavities. With 32 cavities in each machine, they can produce over 17,000 caps an hour. When a box of caps is finished, it makes its way into the filling area, so each cap can be attached to a bottle. These caps, the milk and the two-liter bottles then head down to the filling line. For the very first time, they are all in the same room, ready for action. Pipes run from the milk processing room, where the milk was...